Hi everyone, this is Dave Cole. We're going to talk about data center real-time monitoring tools. So in the previous module we talked about some of the things we want to look for when we go out to buy real-time monitoring. Now we're going to look at some of the tools that are out on the market today. Again, not all the tools that are out there, but a nice cross-sampling of, of some of the tools and might help you generate some questions when you're going to evaluate vendors. If there are any questions during this module, please use the question and comment box. And let's go ahead and get started. In this module, topics we're going to cover, we're going to look at an overview of real-time monitoring tools. And at the end of the uh, module, there'll be a quiz. So let's look at some of the tools that are out there. Let's look at APC Structureware. APC is now owned by Schneider Electric. So a lot of times you'll see uh, APC by Schneider Electric or, or some other uh, branding on that. But uh, it was Amer originally uh, American Power Conversion. APC Structureware. Uh, was kind of an uh, enhancement of their ISX Central product. This is a crossover tool. Um, by crossover tool, it, it provides more than just real-time monitoring. It also does asset management and some things like that as well. So a lot of these will be kind of crossover tools that we'll be looking at. They sell this as a network appliance, which will support uh, up to 525, 2025, or 4,025 devices. So as I add more devices to that, I may need to buy more of these network appliances. They have really, really good support for AC, APC products, but they also do a nice job of supporting third-party devices as well, particularly SNMP devices. Uh, they're only supporting data. They don't support SNMP traps coming from other devices, which means I might need to poll for alarms but uh, they've done a really good job of working with third-party equipment. They do have some optional add-on modules for capacity management, change management, uh, and surveillance. So uh, using their NetBots hardware, which has cameras associated with that, you can actually set up a surveillance system with this um, software and hardware um, as well. They do have a very nice web services API, application programmer interface. That allows me to pull data from Structureware and put that into other uh, IT applications. All right, so they do a good job of, of sharing the information that they're gathering. Eaton for Seer is used primarily to support Eaton equipment. So they do a very good job of supporting uh, Eaton equipment, but they also can support some third-party equipment, but they have to use some additional hardware to do that. They have a very large library of supported devices, so there's a lot of devices that they can support out of the box. They use data acquisition hardware, so these are a lot of rack-mounted devices to monitor um, the uh, devices that are in the data center. So again, this is a uh, kind of a hardware solution. It does support drill down to the device level, so I can drill down to a particular device and, and get more information about that device. One thing about Eaton for Seer is a very customized solution. So they're going to come in and send an engineer who's going to spend some time with you, spend some time on site. They're going to uh, design a system that is exactly how you want it to be. Right? So uh, the screens that you see above, the power density by area and drilling down to the device level, those are customized screens designed specifically for a customer. Right? So when we get into customized solution, we do have to remember we're using an engineer's time and we're going to pay for that time. So it is going to be um, a, a very uh, expensive solution, can be a very expensive solution if you're building something uh, pretty extensive. And when you need support for that, you're going to have to bring the engineer back out to add devices and things like that. So a very customized solution. Uh, the GUI does allow some personalized views based on individual preferences, which is nice. And they do a very good job of trend analysis forecasting. So they can do modeling and analysis uh, tools that are included with Eaton for Seer to help you to do some capacity planning and some nice forecasting. Geist Environet, this is a, uh, they actually bought this from um, uh, RLE Technologies about two years ago. Uh, it, it's both a, uh, uh, an appliance and a software solution. They use this Niagara platform, which provides support for a lot of different protocols. So SNMP, Modbus, BACnet, LawnWorks, Niagara protocols. So when we talked in the previous module about, you know, what do I need to monitor? This, this uh, software and hardware solution can monitor a lot of different protocols. I can provide both monitoring and control so we can turn things on and off and so on. It is a very customized solution. So again, the screens you see there to the right, 
uh, didn't create themselves. Those were designed by an engineer. Um, so you can get a very nice customized solution that'll be just what you want. You are going to pay for that customization. So they have uh, they provide hardware solutions for monitoring. Environment also work. EnviroNet also works with other equipment from other vendors. So they can monitor the Geist equipment very well, but they can also monitor equipment from other vendors. And they have a library of supported devices. So a lot of stuff will work right out of the box. Liebert Site Scan. It's actually based on an automated logic controls platform. Uh, so Liebert doesn't actually own the platform, but they've made extensive. Uh, customization to that to really make a nice package. Uh, very widely used in the industry. The, the base communication protocol is BACnet, although they have some protocol converters that will allow them to work with some other uh, devices. Primary support is for Liebert equipment. And you'll see that with a lot of the hardware manufacturers. They'll support their own equipment very, very well. And then they'll have add-ons to allow you to support equipment from other manufacturers. So in the case of Libre Site Scan, they use data acquisition hardware. They've got third-party equipment can be monitored using their, their site T, TPI E hardware. TPI meaning third-party interface. Very comprehensive alarm handling. They probably do a better job of uh, alarm handling than any of the products that are out there. There's an extensive list of things that they can do with it. Libre can be a very customized solution. So again, the screens you see above there, the one-line diagrams and the data center uh, layout, those are all um, uh, custom-developed screens for a customer. They do a great job of trend analysis, forecasting, modeling. Uh, they've got some nice analysis tools uh, combined as part of the SiteScan product. Modis Open Data has, has a really nice background architecture. So they are a very scalable architecture in the back. They do a lot of nice things for uh, collecting data from various devices. They can either run that as a hosted solution or as a purchased application. Very open architecture. So I've got the ability to add devices and data points on the fly. Uh, probably a better job of that than anybody on the market. They do have out-of-the-box support for a lot of infrastructure devices from major manufacturers, but again, I can add my own. And I, I, it doesn't support SNMP traps. That is going to come uh, be provided in an upcoming solution, but they do support SNMP gets and sets. And one of the things that I really like about this product is they have the ability to create data values and alarms. So for example, I might have a row of, of uh, racks, and I might want to create a variable that says, what is how much power is being used by all the racks in this row? I can create a data value that says row one power, and say add these eight values together, and that's what creates that data value. And I can do that on the fly, which is a very nice feature. I can also create alarms. Maybe I've got uh, monitoring two crack units. I would like those two crack units to work together. So maybe I monitor crack unit one, and it says it's humidifying. And I monitor crack unit two, and it says it's dehumidifying. Obviously, I've got some demand fighting. One of them is trying to undo what the other one is. I want to generate an alarm for that. So I can do that using Modius Open Data. No Limits Software Ramp, it monitors power all the way down from the utility all the way down to the server level. So it will go down and talk to individual IT devices, which is a little different than some of the products do. It has a data analyzer that runs in the background, and it continually evaluates potential failover conditions. So I, if uh, this rack PDU were to fail, I want to know about that, right? What's it going to do to me when it fails? It does track PUE, my power usage effectiveness, DCIE, my data center infrastructure efficiency, and also CADE, corporate average data center efficiency. It does that for all, all locations. So because it's monitoring all the way down to CPU usage, it can also track this corporate average data center efficiency, which also takes into account the IT efficiency. So a nice parameter to have. It does support auto discovery, and it also does automatic change logging. So that reduces my setup and audit costs, and also increases my availability. Optimum Path Visual Data Center uh, is a nice product. does support some limited auto discovery. It is licensed by the number of racks and the number of critical facilities uh, devices, so UPSs and PDUs and so on. It supports multiple protocols, SNMP, Modbus, and IPMI. It does have some limited auto discovery, so some of the devices, it can go out and discover that, which does make it then easier to set up. 
They provide both monitoring and control functionality. It's also a 3D model, which is pretty nice. You can do a, a fly-through of the, of the data center. And it can also act as an asset management tool. It doesn't provide workflow, but it does provide some asset management. And they have a customizable dashboard interface. There's some customization with the product. However, a lot of the customization you can do yourself with the tools that they provide. And Raritan DC Track, again, this is a crossover tool. So it's got uh, both an asset management tool and also uh, doing some monitoring as well. They've got a nice graphical view of the data center down to the rack elevation, so I can see everything that's in my rack. I can use this for asset management and monitoring. It only monitors SNMP for the protocol. They do some basic change management. So as you manually change things, it will write that into a change management log. It's not doing that automatically, but it does give you some change management capabilities. And SnapSense, SnapSoft is uh, not a specifically a data center management product. It's really designed to manage environmental, specifically temperature. So it's designed for large data centers, maybe greater than 5,000 square feet. And they're really focused on the data center environmental conditions. Use a lot of wireless sensors to gather the data. So they're non-intrusive. I can pop these sensors wherever I want. And it uses something called live imaging. And what it does is it can map um, uh, your temperature changes to movies. So I can say, show me what my temperature looked like over the course of a day or a month or a year at whatever speed. And I can see how the temperatures change. So I can also look at temperatures, pressure differential, humidity, and so on, whatever the sensors will support. They are also working with CFD uh, companies computational fluid dynamic companies to kind of marry those technologies. So remember when, when we do a CFD model, one of the first things we need to do after the model is run is to validate that data. What is the temperature here? What is the airflow there? So what this can do is SynapseSense can talk to the CFD model and say the temperature reading I have here, here, and here are these values. And then the CFD uh, tool can then say, okay, I've validated my model. There's a quiz on this, uh, on this topic at the, on the courses page. And if you have any specific questions about anything we've covered in this module, please use the question and comment box. And thank you very much for joining us in this module.